Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Mike Toledo, and I've got a uh, pretty cool segment coming up. We're going to be talking about uh, some trapped pressure, some really bad dents. I mean, some really bad dents that we've done, I've done, and my student has done. But Joe Garcia comes on, and we really talk about uh, some of the scenarios that, well, I might have done differently and he would have done differently there's a dense that i've learned that sets up into another dent that we're going to talk about mario's that i actually helped coach mario based on what my experience was so you should check that out and we're going to talk about uh, kyle he is a pdr tech that really has a unique card i'm going to talk about that and how you can use it for your advantage but meanwhile, I want to say thanks a lot for Rapid Paintless Dent Repair, Chris Dale out there in New York, Long Island. Thanks again for the hats. You can check him out. I'll leave his link on, this, on the description as well if you want to check him out. And thank you again, Chris, for sending this, man. And I know you listen to this podcast and watch it uh, on a daily or when, you, when it comes out. Uh, so I appreciate your your loyalty and uh, thanks a lot. I really do appreciate you listening and sending in a hat, dude. Right. Kyle Chase, man. Kyle Chase sent me his hat. Thank you very much. It's ICDI Chase Dents. And his name is ironically Kyle Chase. That is friggin' awesome. So he's a hail tech, last name's Chase. And uh, that's not why I'm I'm talking about this, but I do want to bring up something cool. And he did send me some uh some like uh some cool detail towels right here. This guy brands himself, man. He is a brander, and this is why I'm going to feature him here because um not just this stuff this hat's nice this is nice it's cool i like the color nice job nice job there um kyle i'm gonna tell you what's really nice and you guys will probably think the same but look at this business card man i i mean i really want you to look at this business card look at this dude. it's metal it's freaking dope let me actually let me, let me post it up here better here Let's see if that'll focus look at that this thing is dope so let me see if we can get that in focus a little bit more he's got his information right there um let's do the specialized in big dents door dings and hail damage he's got a cool little logo on the back here so these are expensive though very expensive but i like it because yeah it feels like it's got some value to it you know what i mean he he gives these out and these aren't cheap he's got his information all on there i'm gonna uh i guess i'll i'll, I'll get that information where he got it from i think he did mention it to me and um i was looking at it the the website and i'll get that for you guys as well uh look on the description here but i chase dense i love the card and here's here's why i'm going to bring it up uh, or talk about this subject ladies and gentlemen this is a great selling point i mean if you give somebody a card like this right do you think they're going to throw it away at least right away do you think they want to lose it they probably want to show this to a lot of people and it'll probably impress the hell out of them. But my idea of this is you could put a VIP, like VIP, like embroidered like VIP, right? Or have your, you know, DT logo or, you know, your logo here, but VIP card. And I'm not generally a person that likes to give away discounts or anything like that uh, not for you know not voluntarily i used to do that back in the day by the way i make a lot more money not giving discounts so obviously that works but this is something cool that you'd want to give to maybe your highline customers your customers that keep coming back that you might know or you might are trying to get them to come back all right you're 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 looking for that type of customer 
you get a customer that spends over three, four, five hundred dollars with you. Maybe they've come to you, they they recommended to friends and whatnot. Man, can you imagine giving this to them and say, listen, this is a lifetime 10% discount. This is yours. Don't lose it. If you lose it, you lost your discount. I'm not giving another one away. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to take this sucker, they're going to stick it in their wallet, or they're going to put it somewhere that they know they're not going to lose it because this, this ain't no paper card, man. This is, this is, this is nice. This is metal. This is, this is heavy. I love it. I, I, I think it's badass. I know you guys are trying to look. So my greasy fingers now are all over it, dude. But I think he did an excellent job at designing this. When I saw this, I forgot who gave this to me at first. Oh, I know who did. Matt from uh, Get a Grip. Dents done right. He said, look at this thing. This is pretty cool. And I was like, damn, this thing is awesome. And so I called him up and I asked where he got it. I looked on there and I think I, it's pretty expensive. So it's like, um, I think it's like a dollar 50 each if you get like 500. But me personally, I think this is really good. That's why you're not going to give every single one of these out to, to a bunch of people, right? You're going to give it to your VIP people. You're going to make a member's card or something like this and this is something i would do i would definitely i'm going to be doing this i just got to get permission from the wifey to make sure i can spend that much money and she'll go for it she'll go for it um I'm, i have other ideas whirling in my head but that's the main one right there is that i am going to make a vip card i think that you guys will think it's awesome as well kyle chase i'm going to give it to you his his website is ichasedents.com and I chase dents at Gmail and his Facebook and Instagram is at I chase dents. So check them out, dude. I mean, Kyle, if you're watching this, which I'm sure you will at one point, F a nice job, dude. I mean, this is the nicest card I have ever seen a PDR tech have. I've seen some nice ones, but this is definitely memorable. This is, I don't need, this is not even my card. I don't want to lose it. I want to put it right there where I'm not, I, I love it. I think it's great. So you guys have a hat or you have some cool stuff that you want to uh, talk about or you have me talk about, send it over to me, send it to my shop. 2120 West Mission Road, Suite 240, Escondido 92029. Don't forget it's dent time. 2120 West Mission Road, Suite 240, Escondido, California, 92029. So I appreciate you guys. And let's get cracking into the next segment with Joe. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Well, well, well. We're back again with Joe Garcia. How you doing there, Joe? I'm good, brother. How are you? Not bad, not bad. Hey, listen, everybody, if you have time, if you've never heard of Joe, which I'm sure you have by now, don't forget to follow him. Go check him out at his website, DentEvo.com, or at DentEvo on his Instagram. That's Facebook, too, as well, I would assume, right? Yeah, that's Facebook, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, anyways, Joe, how you been, man? I've been okay, man. I've been okay. Business is good. We work lots of dents out there and still fixing dents. So, yeah, that's what I love to do. How about you, yeah, bro? I can't complain, man. Um, like I told you before, behind the closed doors, dude, I could. But it's probably not going to help, dude. You know what I mean. So, um, I think, I think, uh, I think all in all, we, you know, things are getting back in the swing. That's that feels like it. You know, the COVID stuff. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. everybody thinks like they want to, you know, kind of, um, shall I say, get back their lives, dude. You know what I mean. And I think that yeah. once that happens, then then I think that the it's really going to start rolling, especially now during our busy season right now. It's start, starting to get warmer out here and people want to get out and do things and that means it's wash their cars detail them and get them fixed yep. up yep they're more active and those cars are getting hit left and right and they need somebody to fix them so yep. nice to a nice problem for us well right? i have it is a nice problem and 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 hopefully we don't have these big problems like these big smashes that we're going to talk about and 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 some 
And the topic is, you know, complex dance trapped pressure, right? Mm -hmm. um, Joe, I kind of gave you a little teaser of kind of like what we're going to talk about. And, and all of a sudden, it's almost like we got to hit the record button when Joe and I first, when we get right on here, we, we already are saying really good stuff that we should, and we should be recording this right now. <laughs> so this is a topic, complex dance, trapped pressure. Um, Joe and I can, we can almost find ourselves in a rabbit hole, you guys, talking about one subject to another and it just goes on and on which i'm sure you guys will benefit and uh hopefully you guys enjoy this podcast because we're going to get right into it so joe. yeah the, the disclaimer is that you know joe garcia goes on tangents once in a while so <laughs> i apologize in advance yeah well hey it, it doesn't that, that has that that's a good tangent though it's not a it's not a negative one though joe it's one it's one people will want to pay attention to so yeah, hopefully in fact you have a video coming out that i have that you you really break down this dent i think you take 15 minutes dude minimum to break down this repair and i think it's essential that anybody who wants to learn about pdr pricing should be paying attention to that and that's the uh the dent meetup we had uh, a few you know about five months ago so anyways that's coming up too um meanwhile ladies and gentlemen joe and i i did this dent and i called him for some advice i think it was maybe a couple months ago and we were doing this dent right here um i was doing this dent and you've probably seen it on uh on instagram and uh, i basically thought this was going to come out a little smoother than i anticipated like all of us do right joe yeah um so i'm gonna tell you right off the bat it's the one the oil can uh i think i underestimated it i think i estimated 1100 bucks i think i should have done it for a minimum of 1500 bucks really and uh yeah i learned my lesson on this one i i did do the mobile tech rx but uh, i kind of gave them a price break because they were they were saying look i don't want to paint it i know it's going to be perfect but um I, I told him it was going to be closer than, you know, to perfect more than anything. I thought it was going to be 90%. <laughs> we'll see. We'll show you, see, see what's going it's on. Oh, really? Like, Joe, right? when you get these type of repairs, dude, like, what do you, what are you kind of, what are you looking for? Or what are you promising the customer? I mean, do you run into these type of repairs where you kind of misjudge it? You know, thinking, I mean, by no means this isn't, doesn't, not easy, but I'm just saying you get a little too overconfident like, like I did. Yeah, that would be an understatement for me because I, I do. And, and first of all, I'm going to say that thing looks really nasty, man. You know, from here, I'm seeing, you know, those, the fold going, you know, about two inches over the, the body line. And that looks like a tough one. So, you know, you know, Kudos to you, Mike. But uh, yeah, to answer your question, man, I, I get overconfident sometimes. Um, and that's where I think the assessment really, really uh, pays off is if you take that time to break down the repair, you look at it with your light. And I mean, you know, put your light back and really see, you know, where that damage goes and, and you pay attention to the depth and, you know, also, you know, what your hidden advantages are, like sometimes a dent that deep by a body line, you know, I could see why it gave you so much confidence because you thought, oh, that body line, all I got to do is get it up and it's going to be rigid enough to keep its shape and the rest is, you know, going to come out. So I could see where you're coming from, Mike, but yep. man, that's, that's exactly what happened, Joe. I mean, that's exactly what happened. I thought that body line was holding all the pressure. But let's, I'm going to be honest with you. It's this bottom part right here, down here, right near the edge. That was a huge problem. Um, yeah. More bigger than I thought over here in the corner where it meets on the right side. Okay. This part right here wasn't that hard. It wanted the oil can right here down below. Okay, real quick, Mike. I, sure. Your cursor, your arrow isn't, uh, isn't okay. pointing. It's, okay. it's not i don't see your arrow on the screen okay so. well okay so I'll, I'll kind of make i guess i might have to do that in the in post but okay but towards the bottom by where it connects to the bumper mm -hmm. plastic bumper yes that the, that part right there where you see the, the reflection going right touching the edge yes okay that wanted to stay in 
All right. Middle. And the part over yeah. for the furthest right over there in the middle of the panel, you can kind of see the bend in the reflection over there. Yeah, um, it's like here. That that part right there was holding pressure. So the outside pressure was um was not letting the main pressure release well easy. Yeah. So I, I basically, I think I, I really tried to attack the center too quickly instead of bringing. Most that's of the what I was going to ask you. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. I was going to say, like, where do you start a dent like that? I mean, yeah. Well, so you start. The yeah, Here, here's the deal, Joe. Up so here, then I can tool, tool the rest, you know, or at least a good. My, my main thing is that I tried to cold glue it and I, I think I, even overstretched a little bit uh, on that. I put too much metal back over here and not release, or excuse me, put too much metal towards the middle by right pointing. You know, trying to yeah. pinpoint it even with and the you see ball, buckling a little bit there. Not, that that game, that was the problem it, child so the whole gonna, way. Okay. It's just, it's just gonna tighten up everything too much, so. And then you, then you, you can kind of see like, well, I didn't think I was, I thought like, well, I think I'm in pretty good shape. So mm -hmm. now I'm going to get ready to use the perfect pole because I tried to move that body line. It did not, or the crown, it did not want to go. Did not want yeah. to go. Okay. So, so I wanted to, you don't have a perfect pole. How would you attack this dent? Like, cause you're a, you're a mobile guy. I'm a mobile guy. I don't have a perfect pool, but what I do is I put a, a chain, a length of chain on my, at the back of my truck, my bed slide and my Tacoma pickup uh -huh. and I basically string the, the chain across and I, I put a ratchet strap and, you know, uh, I just pull back and, you know, I don't have to do that very often, but it's becoming more prevalent. And I did it on an accord about a week and a half ago. And I was really concerned about this door on, on the accord because, you know, those things are really flimsy and, and it really helped. But one thing that I have to say with my experience with tension pools is, is it helps if we do the tension pull before anything else, before any pushing, and you just you go to the the area that you think, and it's kind of a guessing game, you know. But it, I've noticed that you go to the problem area and you put a, a good glue tab on there, and you you hook up to it and set tension, and then you start knocking down crowns, uh, you know, the the big uh, obvious crowns, and then look for the hidden uh, pressure traps, like maybe. Uh, you mentioned that damage uh, over by the bottom of the quarter panel where it meets the bumper cover. Yep. yep. It was holding pressure. Did you happen to take the bumper cover off and, and tap with a mallet? I did, take, I did take bumper cup, cumper, excuse me, cover off towards the end because I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I got to release some pressure here. Um, okay. Again, Joe, you know, even as a veteran tech like myself, like you, you know, we make mistakes because it's one of those things where it's very tricky, where you have to find out, is it crown dominant or is it low dominant, right? And I think the the, the, the fact matter of is, is that I should have hooked up a, the perfect pole in this, this section that you're seeing me glue pole. I should have done that first. I really should have, because that metal would have countered the, the the trapped like pressure. Let me turn that volume down. down. That it would have it would have countered the 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 pressure locked on the outside. You, you're right. Pro, you're right. I think it, it would have it would have definitely sustained a lot of that, or or at least relieved a lot of that tension and that trapped yeah. pressure. Um, and and probably wouldn't have wanted the oil can. So right here, it's starting. Mm -hmm. It it wants the oil can. We don't see that yet. Because yeah. I feel like I, I was at the stage where I go, okay, I need to hook up the perfect pole on this. Mm -hmm. And gosh dang, if I didn't have the perfect pole, I probably wouldn't be able to get this out. I mean, I just, you know, I, you can use the pogo stick. You can use the Kiko K-beam. But yeah. some of those, you know, you don't have the leverage that you that you 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 need or it, it some of it can be in your way, you know, as you yeah. are trying, yeah. trying to do this. So, right. And by the um, way, like, I, I got to say, not to interrupt, but. You know, I I wasn't there for that repair, so it's really easy for me to say, you know, here's what you should have done, Mike. You know, Mike, you should have done this or that, and it it's all speculation for the guy watching uh, through, you know, a video screen. It's it's another thing to be the the guy actually trying to repair it. Um, 
you know, you, you took on a huge challenge there. And when you're taking on those kind of challenges, you're going to have some, some snags and you're going to learn. And if you're open to it, and I, I think yeah. that's yeah. what you, what we found out on this one. Yeah. This, this is, this is why we have these, right? I mean, we all want to be better. We all want to get better. Yeah. You know, one thing I, I, I hate about this industry, though, the only the one that gripes me is that there's always that person, that PDR prick, that that thinks that they can do it way, way better than you. Um, you know, and uh, they they every do they do all the dance perfect, and and you know, and there's always something for them to to criticize. And I think we we had this off conversation. You brought it up a good point too, as well, is that you know, you, you a, a PDR tech isn't there. You know, um, they don't they don't see the circumstances. They don't see the the in person you know challenges uh, that you would on something like this. And I, by no means am I making an excuse for myself saying that this is this didn't come out because uh, you know uh, and anybody could have done it. I'm not saying that. I'm just I'm just saying there's a certain amount of respect that people need to have to one another. Um, yeah. Because I, you, I think you and I said this off camera. I would never. You said you would never, and I even said that on Instagram the other day. Is that I would never attack someone's work, especially publicly, you know, or say that they, you know, that they're better than them or whatnot. It's just I, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't see that. This is why. If I felt this way, do you think I'd be showing this, Joe? And you and I would be talking about this and 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 talking yeah. about our our big challenges and, and that we have with ourselves you got a lot of guts dude showing that stuff and I, I i admire you tremendously and i think a lot of people do because you'll you're willing to put yourself out there like that and part of that is that you do get those couch surfers that you know have an opinion and it's just an opinion at the end of the day and uh you you handle it a lot better than i do i just block people and i don't <laughs> i don't even bother you know you know addressing it because i consider the source you know there's an old saying man it's like don't, I think it says, uh, don't take criticism from someone you would never even take advice from. You know, it's, you don't even know this person. They're, half the time, they're, they're, uh, their screen names are some code name, like with not, you know, you don't even know who this person is. It, it, it doesn't, it's meaningless. It's irrelevant. Yeah. So yeah. It, the main thing is, is that the value is that you put this out there and the rest of us learn from it. And we, we all learn from it and we, have a dialogue about it and we, we break down these repairs because tomorrow I'm going to repair something like that. You're going to repair something like that. And so is anybody watching this who's, you know, doing PDR and, and wanting to challenge themselves. You know, when we challenge ourselves, we are putting ourselves out on a limb and we, we will be vulnerable to failure. But yeah. what happens when we fail? If we're open to it, we can learn. Yeah. And I, and I agree. I, I 100% agree. I mean, we, I would say we don't get better. Uh, I don't know. I, 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 we don't last in this industry by being dicks. Let's just put it that way. Um, I just don't, you're only going to last so long, but anyways, yeah. here don't we worry are. About them. Don't even, don't even listen to them. Mike. they don't matter. Nope. So here we go, Joe. I'm getting the tension. By the way, if you guys are wondering what tab I'm using, I'm using the Can-Am. Uh, those are pretty good tabs right there, dude. I mean, gosh, what's not a good tab, right? I mean, between Kiko, these, you got uh, Anson's, glue. I mean, you just, and now here's where I'm, I'm, I'm taking the tension. This helped big time, all right, because I couldn't get it to move, Joe. And most of you guys would say, I would have done this in the first place, all right? Yeah, I know that. So, like, <laughs> I know you're probably saying that, um, but again, it's like someone says, "I always tap down the crowns." Well, we all know that it's not that can't be the case every single time. You know, sometimes the crown can be so tight that you need to pull it right or or push it, or yeah. vice versa. The the low is so tight you need to tap down the crown to release the low. So, right. in this case, we're doing a little bit of both, right? We got tension, and we've got crown releasing and i'm also using a um that's a pivot tip works ph phenomenal i think we used a little bit on the porsche too as well um right. but right. it helps give you a lot of tap without you know jeopardizing a lot of lows so um you can see it's pulling a little bit 
And you are probably looking, Joe, what would you do at this point? I mean, what, what do you, what are you thinking here? Cause I turned the audio off. I don't want to commentate, distract lead the, lead the witness, huh? Uh, dude, you know, uh, I, I mean, at, at the, at the level you're at right there. I mean, I think, yeah, I'd be doing the same thing. I think I'd be tempted to start pushing on that body line uh, from what I can see in the, from this uh, perspective again there's a lot i don't would you, see would there's, you push with that still on or would you push take it off and then push take it off and push yeah you know but, uh, see i was thinking that's speculation bro i was thinking, bro. I was you know, thinking tapping tapping down <clears throat> below and i don't think i tapped down below so you can see the hump and the reflection right oh i did yeah. tap down okay serve myself <laughs> yeah man your, your instincts serve you well. Right. I, obviously, you know, I didn't rewatch this video because I was so I was kind of upset at myself. I know some of you guys might say at the end of this repair going, well, it wasn't too bad, Mike, as you're describing. It wasn't, but it was in a way, you know, because I was expecting a, a lot better. I yeah. I felt I the reason why I stopped hitting right there is because I felt it really not get it was kind of almost like a like, what do you call a boomerang effect when I was when I was tapping it, Joe, um, yeah. down below. Okay. And it just, it just was not going. And I'm using the crown jewel, you guys. So if you haven't used that hammer, that is an outstanding hammer, dude. So, yeah. So I'm starting to pull a little bit, see if that's going to help pull some more. Yeah, it did. It did. It really did. Um, but I think, Joe, I think you're right. I think I should have done a little tension uh, pull in the beginning. I'm still trying to see if I can get that metal to come back up and stay here what's your go-to hammer on this man are you using something similar to this or what are you what are you using man i i'm mostly doing knockdown work with uh i like for something like that i mean i do have a uh endeavor uh the the original the first generation of that hammer there it, it wasn't called the crown jewel but it, it was just ma mainly a blending hammer with a carbon fiber handle um and then you could put two tips one on each side and I'll use something kind of similar, like a dent craft, the red mushroom. You know, uh, I can't remember the the name of it, but I mean, it's like this a little bit wider than a quarter. You know. Yeah, I think and, I did see you use that before. And I use that, but not as much as I use a knockdown and a and a body hammer. And I'll use like a, a dent craft uh, knockdown uh, handle with a. Um, I really like the ultra dent tools little hockey puck tip i think they call it that it's like a little neop black neoprene oh and yeah looks, yeah yeah uh, you know yeah looks like a little hockey puck and uh that moves a lot of metal i've also been you know w when we did that porsche back in january or whenever it was i started using the uh the slapper tapper again you know for really stubborn uh gradual waves uh yeah you started a using that on the porsche dude yeah, exactly. Exactly. That was so that was something in my arsenal that I kind of forgot that that I had and and you know because I don't use it on lot on import or new imports because the metal is just so it's like paper, dude. And and I think that goes back to where what we're talking about how maybe had you started with a tension pull first before anything, you could have, you know, relaxed that metal, that real thin uh, what what is that? Is it an Acura or an Accord? Yeah, dude, you know those those Honda Accords, dude. Uh, the, yeah. Anything Honda is just. Uh, I I think, I think at one point I opened up the door. I thought a, I thought I saw a stamp called Budweiser on there, dude. So yeah, no was, kidding, you know. no kidding. Yeah, I I think uh, this is the future right here, dude. And you know, for you taking that on, you learned something valuable because this is what we're gonna see from here on out: is metal like this, damage like that, and we need to know how to cleanly move that metal. And I, I think that, you know, what you learned there is what I learned a few years back on a Camaro. I had done this Camaro that I tried attacking it too aggressively at first. And I mean, it was a huge dent and, and a guy had punched it in the quarter panel. And I don't know if this guy was, you know, the incredible Hulk or something, but literally <laughs> that the smash was, it was like over 30 inches dude, of this quarter panel and anybody I know you've worked on Camaros before the new style Camaros and anybody listening watching this who who's worked on them, they know you know they're really soft 
and I ran into an oil can situation. I got the, the whole bulk of the dent out, but there was a sharp little, you know, the punch, the, the guy's fist, basically the shape of it. And uh, that thing oil canned on me so bad. And I ended up having to use a uh, technique I saw on, 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 you know, I'm not trying to plug dent trainer or anything, but I did see uh, uh, where you guys used a uh, stabilizer plate, which I thought was genius uh, with a uh, little piece of sheet metal. And what I did was I, I, I double sided taped it in there because I had to stabilize it. I had, at the time I had a big dent machine. This is uh, an arc type of it's like it was the old school version of uh of the new uh what, help me here what is a pdr box a power pdr power box PDR box yeah yeah so now i've since gotten the cam auto body heater which i haven't used a lot yet but i before i had a big dent machine and that's what they called it and it was just basically a little arc welder and i'll tell you dude that didn't work and seldom ever worked for me and not to you know criticize the thing but I got more arc on it from a nine volt battery, you know, so <laughs> it wasn't helping me in that situation. So I'm a little resentful, but nonetheless, I ended up using that technique that I learned from you guys, you and John highly with the uh, stabilizer plate with uh, some thin gauge uh, uh, aluminum sheet. And I 3M uh, double sided taped it to the, to the panel and it still didn't stabilize the, the panel. It was still caving in. But what I did was I took a sharp, circus rod you know uh like a finesse pdr finesse mark circus rod uh real sharp and i did these little punctures into that sheet metal and those you know now those points they didn't come out through the you know you couldn't see outies or high spots out on the outside of the of the skin of the panel but what it, this did is it kept uh pressure uh, get it kept that stabilizer plate pressure up up against the the metal the skin and it stabilized it so you could press on the on the little bit of that wavy bump that was there and it it would stay in place it wouldn't cave in um and then after that i put uh i, I put some uh sound deadening again 3m sound deadening material over that so it looked like it's meant to be there you know so it doesn't look like a hack job some would say and, and hey i'm willing to take the criticism some would say that was a hack job um, I say I took on, I bit off more than I could chew, but I learned from it and I learned what I would do differently next time. But, uh, you know, that's what happens when we take on challenges, man. And anybody who has criticism for that, they haven't been taking on enough challenges, I think. They, they, they haven't been challenging themselves at all. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying you have to be a hack in order to be good, but you've had to have hacked something in order to get, get better. So <laughs> you, you, you I've, learn I've from, up, man. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you had to have learned and by no means, you know, when we say hack today, you know, we're not beyond hack. I mean, you, I've seen what 15 holes drilled in a door jam. I mean, that's wow. just beyond, that's just re ridiculous. Uh, Desperation. Right hack. But Joe, you're a hundred percent right, dude. I mean, um, you know, you got to do what you got to do on certain things to save a dent. And it's almost like you're MacGyver. You're, you're experimenting in the real world to see what's going to happen. You know, again, mm -hmm. back in the day, what we, what we do, we'd fix a dent, get lucky. And what I mean, get lucky is that you didn't know how you fixed it. Yeah. So that's called luck, right? You yeah. just happen to get it right. But when you don't remember how you did it or understand how you did it, let's just put it that way. Then right. that that's, you know, that's how we used to fix dents is hope we can fix the dent like that again. Yeah. Um, given the circumstances. So like throwing spaghetti at the wall. Huh? So let me show you, this is where we end up going. I'm kind of jumping ahead right here. Okay. This is where I got it. Uh, that wasn't very much, but uh, anyways, I had to go inside, ladies and gentlemen. I had to take off. Oops, all oh, my uh, my new vi the video is coming up too, so we'll, we'll do that one. I had to. Um, so this is what it looks like when I'm doing. I had to use the power PDR box, and then you can see it arcing like that. Yeah, and then it did tighten it up though. I'm not going to lie, but it didn't tighten it up as much as I thought it was going to. I, it, it was still, shall I say, not as strong as it is. If, if you, if you put your hand on there and leaned on it, dude, it would, it, it might, it might cave in a little bit, dude. Let's just put it that way. And I, um, 
I wouldn't call it super strong. Okay. So here's the, here's, here's, here's what it looks like. Oh, let me rewind that actually. So you guys can see, this is what it looked like outside. I wanted to see how it would be when the customer sees it in their own eyes. Um, so we're not going to hold back any punches here. Uh, you're going to see the truth of, of this repair. Um, so you, you, and we'll go back and show a reminder of how it looked before just to make sure. Now, this is the part I'm talking right there, right where I'm pointing mm -hmm. that, that pissed me off. I could not get a tool behind there. I couldn't glue pull that. It was so tight, so strong. Uh, I just could not get that to come up. Uh, maybe only one person I know might have been able to get that out, but I couldn't. I obviously wasn't going to drill a hole in that edge to try to do that because I knew it was it was just laminated with another piece right underneath it, and that's why I couldn't get to it. Um, okay. So I am not going to be trying to hack things up uh, any further. <laughs> yeah. But um, so let's keep playing this video. You can see certain angles it looks pretty decent. Uh, other angles it looks you know, an obvious, uh, you can see that area. And for the most part, I would say got it pretty flat, not completely. There's that oil can, you can see a slight little bow in there, just, just a bit, but yeah. the customer was happy and that's what really mattered. They were astounded. They didn't want to repaint the entire quarter panel and bumper and whatnot. Um, they were, they were happy about it. And, um, as long as they were happy, I, I was, satisfied shall i say i wouldn't i wouldn't say happy but i did learn i learned a lot and just what and i actually said the same thing i i probably should have tension pulled first rather than trying to up oh, lost joe there there you are you know what dude I, i'm back now uh yeah i, I lost you for a second there oh my wi-fi okay. yeah yeah can you hear me all right can you see me yeah i can hear you fine yeah Okay. I can hear you. That's cool. it happens, man. This, 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 that's what happens. So, but for the most part, like I was saying, I, the customer was happy. I was satisfied. Um, did I think I could have done better? Yeah, I think so. In the beginning, that's what's so important, Joe, right? As what we say, and even when I train mm -hmm. students, it's, you know, your first five to 10 pushes, your, your actions that you do on a repair um, is, is super crucial at that point. Um, it and really that's is. how it's going to, that, that'll dictate the, the, the way the, the repair is going to go. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. And don't forget, it's not just the, the tech on the technical side too. It, it has to do with the rapport and the education and educating that you do to your customer because, you know, no, no two customers are alike. You know, they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder and that customer, uh, you know, as you, you educated them in the beginning, you ask them what they're, if you ask enough questions and find out what they're looking for, is this a lease return? Is this a used or a car that you're going to be selling? Is it, is it something that, is it your baby? Is it something that you really, really want to look perfect? You know, and again, all this stuff goes into play along with assessing the damage and, and outlining, you know, where do I begin on this, on this quarter panel? And those things and that, are going to give you that right. peace of mind. To, to yeah, start no, you're, 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 you're one no, sorry you know, joe go ahead, finish your thoughts sorry i thought you're i didn't mean to cut I, you off. I was i was done man i mean i basically that what i've found mike and i know you you understand this too and and i'm sure you know your listeners a lot of them if they push you know if they do pdr they do and that is that when you're in the right environment and i think this is why you probably got a shop and a lot of guys are getting shops when you're in the right environment both physically and and up here and mentally you're going to do a better job, right? And and not yeah. just better pushing, but you're going to be more systematic about it. I think, and, and, you know, it's going to help help you along the way. I, and I agree. You know, I want to touch base on what you said. Said just now, well, you said that you know, understanding the customer's expectations is super important. Like, what what do you expect out of this? Are you expecting you know to be close to 100 percent or 100? perfect i mean you're trying to you're doing something that big basically what you're saying is that you're going to invest a lot of time into this repair right, right. and it may not come out 100 percent. chances are on something like that it probably won't yeah. 
but you have to make that clear to the customer of their expectations because one out of those 10 customers could be a perfectionist beyond the means, you know, and, and if it's not the way that they, they thought it was going to go because you failed to let them know and communicate that there would be some flaws or there would be something going on. That's a lot of time wasted, shall I say? So, yeah. Because in my, in my world, and most and some of you guys may disagree, but I know most of the good guys out there wouldn't charge a customer if they really demanded that they weren't happy. I mean, we would just I would just let it go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I don't want to put myself in that position, Joe, and I think you're right. Uh, I wouldn't I would definitely make sure that, that that's addressed. And I think that's important what you said. So so I got to ask, um, what was the conversation like with that customer before you even touched their car when when they decided to go with with dent time what what made them do that or want to go is so that like, what was that conversation like what did you what did you address oh. with them about the repair did you say hey you know what i think we can improve it but you're going to have imperfection here and here and you know or, or is it a this is an experiment i don't know if we can fix it we can give it a shot but here's what you know, you can expect. Yeah, I, 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 I'll be quite honest with you in the audience. I, I went in this very, more, very confident. Okay, maybe too confident. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't promise perfect. I don't do that. I don't would never say that. But I told them probably at most angles they won't be able to tell it was there. <laughs> well, yeah. I think personally, they could see it probably a, a little bit at every angle, not less noticeable at some angles, but not unnoticeable at a very angle so um so that's what bug, bugged me and at the end the customers were ecstatic right because let's face it ladies and gentlemen wait as a pdr tech you you are trained at somewhat level that you become a perfectionist because uh, your eye is trained to see flaws right that's what you're looking for you're not looking for perfection yeah. you're looking for flaws right you're catching yeah. flaws right. and it bugs you when you can't fix those flaws and yeah. especially the ones that you have an expectations of fixing and it doesn't come out uh, all the way that you thought it was going to. Right. So how the communication was is yes, I did not promise the customer hundred percent. I told him it's going to look a lot better. Um, 90% I was, I was shooting for. Yeah. Um, I don't think it came out 90%. I think it came out probably 85, maybe, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe a little less 80 high 80 mid eighties. So, you know. yeah, I, I'll tell you, man, I mean, it, it's, uh, it was a success, you know, you saved their quarter panel and he was happy. So or the customer was happy. So what more can you ask for? You, you did your best and you learned something on it. So the next one you get just like that, if, if you take one on like that, you're going to come in with, with, you know, some schooling, with some education. Yeah. And, and I, I don't think, it doesn't sound like it was uh, a win-lose or a lose-lose. It was a win-win situation, and uh, you learned on top of that. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 he, and if you guys are watching on YouTube and you want to comment, uh, leave some comments for Joe and I. What would you guys do? Um, you know, and, and we, we would definitely like to hear it. Maybe, hey, if you have a great comment and a good suggestion, uh, I would, Joe and I would love to bring it back up and, and, uh, and give you guys some credit on that. And, and perhaps maybe even talk about it and show something, show that technique. So, um, yeah, sure. this is what it's for Joe and I get on this podcast to help you guys or help us the community and, and all get better and, and kind of be like a little round table of this situation. Yeah. I uh, think Joe, cool. do you mind, if I, you mind if I bring this other video in, dude, go for it, dude. Okay. So I'm going to bring this, uh, other video file and this one is actually um this is mario okay so hey. actually now i don't know i never kicked one on here before but we'll see what happens man let me uh let me move that one here let me add you back to the stream here joe <laughs> uh you didn't like my uh my baseball hat backwards yeah. tan here on my forehead Oh yeah, dude. Well, I mean, you wore it backwards. Here, let, yeah. me, let me follow you. Let me see if I can see it here. Yeah, here, go ahead. You like oh, it? Oh yeah, I barely see it, dude. It's awesome. 
Uh, you must have been working on a hard dent, getting close for finishing, right? So you turned the hat back. The life of a mobile bald dent tech. <laughs> I should do a shop just to protect hey, my head. I'm not there yet, dude. I still got some, dude. But you know, oh, I, I think I'm gonna fire it before it quits on me, dude. I think I'm gonna fire it before it quits on me, though, dude. So yeah, come on. Um, all right, so let's set this one up, Joe. Um, this is a dent that Mario wants me to. I kicked it, all right? Oh, man. Oh, wow. All right, so. Why did you go and kick a perfectly good car? <laughs> hey, you know what they say, right, Joe? You can pick your friends, but you can't pick your dents, dude. So. Uh, <laughs> what kind of friend kicks a, a big old dent in a car like that? <laughs> I'm nobody's friend when it comes to this, man. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, that's so this is kind of almost the same type of scenario, Joe. Body line, trapped pressure, right? But this time, this time, we 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 look at some apparatuses to just kind of just like take the tension off, right? We were right. gonna set the perfect pull up, but we feel like Mario was like, well, I kind of want to do something that I don't have, but I want to use that I can yeah. use that I have, right? And I was like, cool. Yeah. So Good, Let's man. think about some some Kiko products, right? Now this yeah, is I, great. Go ahead. I hadn't, Go ahead, seen, that. I hadn't even seen that. Is, is, is yeah. that the, like their their version of the pogo stick? Or? Yeah, they call it the K stick. So wow. brand new, brand new okay. from Kiko. Matter of fact, I got a little video. Them, I I've shot with them a couple months ago, and we and check out this one. This is this is the the adjustable tower of that. We'll talk about that too as well since we're here. Now you can you see how it's off centered, off height. One's okay. lower, one's taller. Yeah. Okay. So you can make it different heights now. Get a little distance on it. Yeah. Yeah, and you can set the height adjustment. So. Okay. All right. Um, nice. This will be on Dent Trainer as well. This is just, but you guys are getting kind of exclusive, Joe. You, you know, this is what we decided to go with this one. All right. Take the tension off. Is this something something you would think about doing first? Is it, is this what you would go route to? Mm. Would you do that first or would you do something else? Uh, listen, I've got a K bar, the first generation. Uh -huh. You know, I don't have a the bridge puller, but I got that little foot from Ultra Dent Tools that you can put on it and make it into a, a bridge puller. And I'm not super uh, proficient with that thing. Uh, there's something something to do with the way that the bolt threads on to the, you know, grabs tension. And I just mine. I, I need to update it or something. But I, what I do use is a little, a little mini K or uh, yeah K bar, and I'm really yeah. happy with that. But I couldn't use it on a big old dent like that. Um, but I I think uh, if he is he trying to put tension on there to to basically yeah. do what you and I were talking about on your other repair. To, yeah. To so this time what he's going to do? Yep, he's going to use that tab right there, which is a newer tab of Kiko's. There's okay. a new version of a kind of like a super tab. We yep. heat the panel up, okay, because, you know, Joe, uh, you and Kiko and everybody's heating these panels up, and I really saw it firsthand. I mean, now Kiko does it, right, and their training does it as well. Okay. And, and Gene and, and, and Dave Shalott, they they like to heat the panel up. Yeah, it helps. Um, it does help. It really does help. Uh, it helps keep the bond on that glue. And um, I didn't do it as – I mean, I was – I. I don't say I was like a big, huge difference every time, but mm. when I don't have the pull I want, I, I go, oh, yeah, I got to heat it up. And when okay. I heat it up, it just takes a few minutes or just extra a couple of minutes to, to do that. And mm. man, I'm, I'm, it, it pulls, man. It's, it, it does really well. We let um, this set up for about, as you guys can see, probably a good, I don't know, maybe a minute, minute and a half. I, I don't know the time length because I'm not sure if I cut through this or not. I think mm -hmm. I probably do, but, um, but now we're setting it up and what we end up doing is using, instead of turning this, this is old school, man. I just take my drill, my, my, um, what is it? Bit driver. Yeah. Right. Okay. And man, this is just as what you, this is what you end up wanting to boom. It just, Beautiful. It just helps, Beautiful. Re helps relieve some of that tension right there. Okay. And you could see that nice. crown came down. A yeah, lot. You got control of that quarter panel. What yeah. what kind of car is that? What kind of what? What kind of car yeah. is that? No, the car. Oh, it's a Dodge Charger. 
Oh, that's the charger you were telling me about. Okay. Yeah. It's a it Dodge seems- Charger. Not in general, ladies and gentlemen, not much access. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Not much access. It's kind of like the Dodge Challenger. Um, yeah. It does have a bit more access, which will we get more in depth in in the video, um, you know, the straight tutorial. But you have to break through this glue. This glue's inside there. And we did make an access point. We're not going to lie about that. But here's the danger zone right here. Do you keep pulling or do you keep pushing? You know what I mean? This is this is where I'll pause that for you, Joe. Um, let me go back up a little bit. Yeah. Do you do you do you you yeah. you push or or do you or do you pull? Because You're opening you a can. Of here, uh, you with got that crown in the middle of it, right? And you got two lows on the on each side of it. I mean, well, this is danger zone right here. Yeah. yeah. And then not to mention the the controversial aspect of drilling a hole in a quarter panel now. You know, like I told you before, I'm I'm trying to get away from it, quite frankly, but. You know, I still do it when it's. What do we, now How do you think you would get to that? Because there's a brace right there. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I I'm, I'm not really familiar with that charger. Um, what it, I can't remember off the top of my head, what what it was, what kind of access was behind that quarter. Uh, uh, so I mean, my gut reaction is to, you know, go in on through the wheel well and drill a, a hole and get up in there and start pushing that body line. But if you can't get access and you're drilling for nothing, right? Yeah, you, you could only get a shaved blim tool after oh you push goodness. through that hot, that glue like crazy. Really? So there's a brace back there? There's a or brace right there. Bracket? Yeah. Okay. So right in that body line, you're going to be pushing on a brace. Wow, man. So now it's not crazy right against it. You got to probably maybe a quarter inch space between it. That's why you're yeah. using the blade tip tool. Which we'll yeah. get to in a second here. We'll, we'll as we're talking now, Joe. Let's go back to this no drill hole scenario thing here. Um, mm-hmm. Now we did end up pulling it some more, but you saying that would you you'd make an access point underneath first? Is that if you because you ain't glue pulling all that out? It, no, like, no. I mean, it'd be great if we could glue pull it all out, but I mean, from what I see in, in the video, that, that body line's hit pretty good, but. You guys got a lot of it out considering yeah. um yeah my gut reaction is the drill because that's all well, that's been our go-to for 20 years over 20 years you know so but you know i question it now i'd rather yeah, not I had drill. Mario, I said, okay mario stop it right here this is and you know what i learned a lot from the honda right this is what yeah. helped us get through this yeah. one right Yep. And this that is why I put this one in here was talking. I was like, basically it's a live and learn, right? You, you yes, go sir. through the motions of the other one um, and you go, okay, I know this, I, this sounds familiar to me. Let's, let's take some of that tension pull off. And, and what I'm getting at Joe is that you were hundred percent right on that Honda. Yeah, I should have tension pulled that first, just like this one. And, um, and then release the crown like this, let it, basically naturally come back up instead of you know trying to move it from the outside so some of that that technique works exactly the way it should this one is definitely a tension pull and we are using the cam auto tab too as well uh, for this and then you can see this tech right here on the left he's actually helping him while he's uh tapping down so it it does have help having two hands okay what do you think about that 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 um that K beam that that lifted up K beam? That's pretty cool, man. Because you, now you can use it. It's going to be more versatile. Uh, obviously, the first thing I think of is you know when you're an off camber or uh, you know in a situation where you've got these different levels of the body lines and you're you're trying to find your footing with that bridge. Now you can adjust it. So that. Yeah. Uh, those guys are always thinking, man. I really, I really love the point we're at in in PDR. Is you know these these companies are really thinking outside the box, and they're 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 challenging us. And uh, and you get jobs like that. It's nice to have those those resources. It really is. Yeah. 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 Here's the mini. Yeah, I like I like mine a lot. I noticed you took the ends off of yours. Is that to get a wider stance? A wider yeah. Footprint? Yeah, yeah, I just I took those off. 
you know what they should do is come up with extensions, like somehow make a where they can. Yeah, which is probably in. will one day they'll have a connector. You know what I mean? Just an extension, yeah. so they can make it as long or as short as you want. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'm really impressed with too is is uh, Sal Contreras, uh, his uh, bridge puller, and I mean he, because I, I can see how I, how rigid that that still is going to be, and he doesn't seem to get any flex on it. So I, I think it's going to be comparable to what you know the the uh, mini. Is it his dent now with two suction cups on it, or how's he how's he doing that? Do he's mean? got uh, he's basically got these little homemade uh, uh, foot pads, I guess you call it, with uh, this is like a little hardwood block uh -huh. Uh -huh. on each side with uh, like a gray yeah, neoprene pad so that it protects the car. And then what he'll do is he'll suction cup and with some lock line, he'll suction cup the the bridge to the car. So that when it does release, when he puts a drill on it and, and it pops, it doesn't go flying. You know, okay. Hit cool. Yeah. cool. So now you can see he put some some uh, Glexo Magic on the tip of that because every time we were using tape, it wanted to like break through super fast. Yeah. How and did how did that work for you guys? It worked tremendously, guys. I mean, it was. I mean that that is no gimmick. That that stuff works. I use it as a tap down, like you have, you know, Ultra's new like needle tap down. Kind of looks yeah. like a VIP. I don't yeah. like it as a tap down itself, so yeah. I just put some Glexo on it and made it a real. There, there's a, what it looks like with the Glexo on it. I made it wow. a really nice, refined, accurate, harder tap down that you can tap on stuff where it won't mark the paint and but it's super accurate and hard enough to just get where you want to go and knock down those highs that you you want to knock down in general you know it never wore through it didn't no didn't wake it didn't wore through yet and guess what i was using on a motorcycle tank now you can see mario's getting getting it getting the meat out pretty well now dude um yeah. it never <laughs> never yeah. hurt the tank i mean that's what i used it for and it and it never the, the tip wasn't going through. Now, now wow. the, the tip itself was mushrooming, mushrooming just a bit, but but you know what, what oh, really? a Harley motorcycle. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, my biggest concern with that, and I told you this before, but uh, and you can edit this out if you want. But, yeah. but my biggest concern is is when it eventually breaks through. And how violent is that going to be when it comes flying through that material and hits the inside of the skin? And what comes to mind, and I could be totally off base here, that maybe it won't ever wear through. It's possible. Um, I don't know what kind of material they're, they're using, but what comes to mind is like when you're pushing on sound deadening material, especially that stuff with the, with like a kind of a cloth over it. And it's real brittle, like on yeah. Nissan. And Infinity's had it a lot. And you're pushing with a sharp tool, and it just breaks through, and you end up cracking the paint and put an Audi. That would be my biggest concern. But I think, I think uh, you know, if, if that's, it's it's possible that it doesn't wear through. So I haven't used it, so I don't know. No, no. I okay. I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll explain that part. Um, it does break through. It will break through eventually. Um, but it takes a long time to do that. Okay. And when it does break through, it breaks through very softly through it. It's not one of those okay. crack, like it's not, not like marble or something or, or like that. Mm -hmm. It's still somewhat of a plastic rubber feel to it. Like, but it's, it, it's hard, but it's not, not yeah. crystallized. Do you know what I mean? Not like yeah. that. Um, I think it's, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say what it, my only concern at this point is, if you're, how well will it work on a really hot day on a black car? Because how you take it off is that you have to flash it with, with a torch, mm -hmm. and melt it, and then you can you can pull it, you can take it off. So, okay. and I okay. noticed, it does. I think that's its kryptonite. It's that it's high heat. It, it it may wear down faster, but I think you have a better chance with it than than you would with an R four or, or something mm -hmm. similar. Well, you know, we've all been in that position where we couldn't get enough tape 
on the, the tool because of the access point, you know, that we're going through. And the tape just keeps wearing through and we're using heat on the dent as well. And, and it's almost like not using any tape at all or any, any cushion on the tool. So this might be just the, the answer for that, even if it's just for a short term, you know, yeah. thing. And the other, the other thing is like, how many years did we use tape? And before we were using Tesla tape, we were using duct tape and we were using uh, electrical uh, tape. 3M electrical tape from Home Depot. You know, it's just like the, we all had our favorite, uh, our favorite tape and, but that stuff wore through so quickly. And we, we all, we all got by with it. We used it and we knew after using it for so long, you get a feel for, for its breaking point. Even Tesla, yes, Tesla breaks through eventually. And you get a feel for it. And that's something that, once again, with PDR, there's a lot of feel to the, yep. to the technique. That's, all, that's 100% right. That's 100% right. I mean, that's what, that's what makes this a good tech is, is being aware, right? Yep. Uh, if you're not aware, you're going to make mistakes. You know, if you're, if you're too concentrated just in the repair itself, but not what you're doing, you know, yeah. as you're repairing it, yeah, you're going to make mistakes, man. And uh, sometimes yeah. it can be very costly. Um, yep. You can see, you can see how, how smooth those pushes are with that Glexo. And I, yeah. by no means am I getting paid from Glexo or anything like that. I, listen, <laughs> you guys know I will talk great about a tool if it's going to help us. Um, and I'm telling you that it's definitely worth it. I think it's 120 bucks and you're not going to be using on every dang tool like you will tape. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to grab tape because it's quicker, faster. And if it's a few pushes, right. I'm going to be using it. But if I'm going to be in a tight area and yep. I know this tool sharp and it's going to chew it up like this one would, you damn yep. straight I'm going to use that Glexo. You know? hey, and that's, why, that's why Mario ended up using it. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I think it's good to have in your arsenal for sure. Because, I mean, like you said earlier about being MacGyver, you know, you you have to have your stuff you know available when you need it yeah yeah and i think at this point you know it, going back to this joe right mario mario knows i was telling him, clean stay clean stay clean stay clean and yeah. this is what he was trying his best and he was using new tools he's never used before this tool he's never owned he never owned the fishtail and right. so he was going in with the fishtail and, him, and picking out those little small things right there. And that thing is sharp, but it's it's forgiving when you push it. So this was another tool that he was using that he really was fond of. You, know, you got to remember, he was coming from Colombia, and he can't just purchase any tool he wants anytime because it's to cost him a lot of money to – yes, it's basically yep. shipping yeah. it all the way. Things. So he has right. to make sure that these tools that he's ordering is going to work for him. And so this is right. like him and a – Kid in a kid, kid in a candy store over here. So yeah, he, he was making the most of his trip. I, I can understand that. Good work too, Mario. Good job, man. That uh, was a tough yeah, one. Super, super nice guy, man. And focused. Like uh, he reminds you of a Colombian Mike Toledo. That's basically what he is. Oh, yeah. I mean, not as handsome <laughs> not as me, but I mean, he's there. He's getting there. So. <laughs> but right on, yeah, man. Mario's a good guy. But to 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 go back on track on this repair though, Joe. Uh, this is, it's either going to come out right or it's not going to come out. It's going to come out pretty, pretty chewy, shall I say, in the body line, right? Yeah. Um, how, uh, what's your go-to on this? Because you could get a shave tool in there. You can get probably a pick in there, um, a thin one. Mm -hmm. You you saw that he was using the fishtail. Were you using, would you use something similar or what tools would you have using that? Listen, dude, I got to say, um, like I told you before, I, I'm not familiar with that car or a part or that that quarter panel. I probably would have bit off more than I could chew because I would have uh, naturally assumed that I could get in under that wheel well, um, you know, by putting a hole in there and, and you know getting the rest of that body line out so cleanly with a, a you know a tool with good surface area, you know, not a little skinny tool like what you guys were using. Uh, you couldn't use anything else because that because the, the access. So I don't know, man. I think I probably – I'm glad I watched this video because I, I'll be aware of that ne next time somebody comes with me to me with that uh, with that car. But I I would have had to figure out some MacGyver tricks, you know. Um, I'm not crazy about drilling those jams, dude. 
you know, quite no, frankly. Know. You know, now, FYI, too, guys, and Joe, that there was, we tried going through the quarter panel. There was okay. no access to the, to the quarter panel. There's a big wall right there, um, probably about, you know, maybe a foot clo- uh, away from that, that dent towards mm-hmm. the light. Um, and I know you're not a fan of drilling in the hole, uh, drilling in the jam, but as I tell my people, you know, uh, the customer, you can live with the dent or you could fight that plastic underneath and then be disappointed that you're going to not get the whole part of the dent out. Yeah. And, uh, or you can make an, you know, manufactured access point right there and tell right. the customer, this is the best point, uh, you know, that you're going yeah. to be able to get that out as clean as you can. Now, yeah. the great thing about this, Joe, that's, that's easier said than done when this is, a car, I'm not going to say what car it was, but a car that, that you can do that. That's the great thing about the advantage of, you know, having this car here is that I get to take advantage of finding out these, these, these access points, right? Yeah. Um, if this is a regular customer, I'll, you believe me, I, I would be charging just to see if I could get underneath that because okay. I know they probably wouldn't appreciate that max that access point as a, as a first we, we, we were making, we were saying something the other day it says, Oh, the, our students are like, it's not always the first option, but it's the first option I choose dude. Right. <laughs> so, yep. Uh, yep. But sometimes you don't have a choice though, Joe, you know what well, I mean? Listen, I, dude, I, I don't want you know, people to think that I drill first. No, hell no, man. I mean, no, I, and, I don't and, want it. I think that's why it's good we're having this conversation because I think it's something that we all have to do at some point and or make the decision to say yes or no. And I mean, you know, l- let's face it, he's going to take it somewhere else and they're, they're not going to care about drilling, you know, and maybe it's not going to come out as clean as, as you got it. I know it won't, you know, I mean, there's a lot of guys that, that they're just going to drill that thing and just poke it up and okay. Pay me, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's that. And that's one thing, Joe, right? If you're going to drill a hole, you better make sure damn straight. You can get to the dent, dude. I mean, that, that that's no worse feeling of drilling a hole and then up, I can't get to it. (laughs) Right. Right. That that is just, oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, I I worked on an accord today, a quarter panel, same area. And I was, you know, fortunate to be able to glue, pull it out. It was just a baby little ding, you know? But it was a little. It had a little bit of depth to it, you know. And I thought, well, I prefer to get a, a whale tail in there, or you know, something, you know, a, a wire in there, and and push it. So I first went and I, I pulled that back the carpet liner on the inside of the trunk, and I pulled out the foam, and uh, I, I I was able to get a tool behind it, you know, slide it through, and and but I couldn't get really good leverage. And then it was it was putting a, you know, an outward crease. You know, some people call it a snail trail. You know. And it was putting a high spot, like a long high spot, you know, further back on the part of the, the quarter panel where where the tool was entering into that narrowed area. After yeah. all that said, I ended up just knocking down my, my high spots that I made and then glue pulling the heck out of it. I had to bowl it out. But I lucked out because it was just a baby ding. Had it been a tough, you know, what you guys just fixed there, I, I would have had to, to drill or something, man. I don't know, you know, and, and that – that comes to that question, you know, this is more of along the lines of, uh, you know, on the business side here, but, you know, do we, when do we say no, you know, when, when, you know, and, and then you risk, you feel like you're risking losing business, you know, or right. like giving your comp- competitor the work, you know, and making them look like a hero. Well, here, here's the thing, Joe, and let me break this down to, um, let me, Break down how Mario and I were assessing the repair, and so was um, Jared with us. He was on the other side doing another <clears throat> dent. We'll talk about him next week. But we, the first thing we we're going to do, well, can we glue pull this whole thing out? Like, right? No, we knew we couldn't, especially the body line area, so or, or above it. And so we go, okay, we're going to try this quarter panel. Quarter panel, boom. That was the first thing we obviously tried, though, too, is try to take a longer blade tip tool, see if we can get it down to it. No, we ran right into that that that, that bracing. And if you guys are familiar with Challengers, then you kind of kind of get an idea of what the Charger's like. It was not as severe, but it had similar bracing in there. Yeah. So we looked underneath, and it was that hard plastic take 
a, you know, half hour, 45 minutes to take that apart, drop that liner down, the plastic liner, and wow. then hopefully, hopefully maybe get some leverage on that body line from underneath. And we weren't sure uh, about that. So yeah, we, we had a pretty good feeling we could get to it from that, from making the access point there. We made the manufactured access point and at first push our first, when we went in, we thought we were like, it, it's over. We can't get to it um, yeah. because it was that tight. The glue and the bracing was that tight in there. And, but Mario was like, Oh, I don't think I can get to it. And I was like, are you serious? Oh, we put the, I put it in there and I kind of shoved it in there and made just like what you said, kind of a snail trail a little bit. And yeah. Luckily, the, the glue was the one that was forcing the tool to come over. So it gave us a quarter of an inch room to get to get to that dent with yeah. those tools. So, right on. yeah, it sounds like that was the only way to get that one done. And by the way, I'm not, Maybe I'm not, not criticizing Maybe you guys by any means because I, I have drilled my share of, of quarter jams, dude. And in fact, coming from the used car, the wholesale you know, world, the rule of thumb that I heard from multiple used car managers was that you can drill um, per the auction, uh, like it was Mannheim, I think that, uh, I don't know, it, it, might, it must have been Mannheim, but I could be wrong, but they were saying that uh, they accept quarter inch holes, nothing, nothing bigger than quarter inch holes in the, in the jam area and even the roof rail. Uh, be, anything bigger they consider- In the, the roof rail? Frame damage, yeah. That's, that's what these used car managers had told me. And I don't know if they were stretching the truth, but that was, I, I took that, that as the green light to, to drill. So, cause there, know, that? yeah, uh, that How was, uh, that, that was about, uh, man, I would say 10 years ago. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, something like that. And I don't know how true that is now, but that was always the rule of thumb. And so, you know, if you could put a small opening there and, and then use, you know, you know, these, these, you know, extra these new tools like the the glexo you know tip what do you call that that glexo coating or something but you put that on the tip you know and that might be the way to do it and you guys got it done it looked great so i don't know well i think the 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 lesson of that story was or that that repair was okay you have something that nasty you tension pull it all right as much as you can but don't go too below the body line because if you start tension pulling there, then you're really kind of like you're you're not doing yourself any favors. You're causing more pressure. Um, yeah. And then keep your tool tip protected, especially when you only have a certain amount of tip to push. That the length was perfect. You couldn't use the heel because the heel was too uh, short the other way for kicking it. So yeah. he had to he had to use the glexo down yeah. there and then finished up with the uh, with the whale tail. And I think he used a little bit of the pick too, which we didn't show in that, in that scene. But um, right. so that was, that was helpful there. But yeah, Joe, yeah. I mean, that's pretty much sums it up on that, man. But yeah. yeah. Well, good job on that, dude. Uh, you know, like I said, this is my own, you know, the whole thing about drilling the jam, that's, that's my own, you know, reservations that I've been, you know, kind of asking myself, you know, do I really want to take on jobs that I'm going to have to drill the jam? But, you know, uh, it's probably circumstantial. You know? I, I said, it's your I said, it's, yeah, we're, we're, we're not thinking f first option drill. I mean, that's, yeah, I, I think I know. I'm thinking, okay, if I am going to make an access point, it's going to be a kill, but one bird with, uh, excuse me, yeah. killed two birds with one stone, right? You make the yeah. access point, you get the den. Look, if you can get the den out clean, right. one access point, customer's happy. Listen, nobody's going to say anything if you communicate with the customer and let them know that you're making an access point, all right? right. That's rule number one. It's the customer's car, all right? So it's nobody else's car but the customer. Mm -hmm. If they want to make the access point, then yep. then, it, then so be that's it. Their, but the other so alternative, if that's the only option, body shop, all right? We all know how that goes. Sure, exactly. And then you're talking about compromising the car even more because they're going to replace the whole quarter panel for that, you know, or call it their dead guy and he's going to drill in the jam. So, yeah, what you say, invasive? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Invasive. Yeah. I think, I think we got another subject to talk about. I think we're not done about the manufactured access point topic, you know, 
Yeah. I'd like to touch base more with you on that. Um, you know, sure. we'll we'll talk more about when when to drill, when uh, how do you assess it, when do you make the call to make an access point, and if it jam is the only option. You know, yeah. how do you assess it with the customer? What's your what's your breaking point? How's your explanation? Things like that. Yeah. So but we'll do yeah. that. All right. Yeah, we can we can do that for sure, man. Because like like you know, I my go to was drilling the the wheel well. You know, arguably that could be considered structural too, structural damage also, you know? So, I mean, how is that any better than, most guys than drilling the that. gem? Yeah. Most guys would favor that or, the, or inside the tail light where no one's going to see that yeah. ever. I mean, you're going to plug it, of course, but that's right. between that and underneath. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm all there for, I'm all there for you with that. I, yeah. I agree hundred percent. So, yeah. I mean, I think that's probably going to be a question for the ages for PDR, you know? When do you, you know. I mean, I think you got the, you got the 50, 50, but I think, you know, I, I'm not gonna make any assumptions, but I'll, you know, I think the most vocal people out of there, um, I don't know. We're not going to go that way, but, but we'll yeah, no, no. Comments, it's, dude, and, and, right? I'm not sure there's got, some comments in here about that, dude. So. And that's okay. That's okay. Let, let people comment and, you know, we'll, that's we'll, what it's we'll for. Take it on. Yeah. And that's why, and I wouldn't have brought that up if, I mean, if I, I didn't come, you know, you didn't ask me to come on here to be a yes man, right? That's right. You know, That's and, right. Uh, and so, and it's it's something that we we technicians we face this daily. You know, we have to ask the question. You know, and 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 let's face it, the customers most of the time, and I don't care if it's wholesale or retail, they don't care if you drill a hole. You know, they're okay with it. And I I question it because, you know, for one thing, I I try and this is goes back into the differentiating amongst my competition i know a lot of my competition are, are pretty drill happy and because they some of them just don't know any better but i i use that as a tool to differentiate but dude i drilled a hole in a in a chevy uh, uh silverado uh, wheel well the other day because i i had to you know I, I got in there and and uh there was an access point already there you know you probably know about that that hole in there it's like a three-quarter inch hole but where I, where the dent was at, I couldn't quite get to it without putting my tool, my, my bar up against the, the wheel arch. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I, you know, I told the customer we, we are, I had let them know, you know, I probably am going to have to drill on this. And, and then, and then sure enough, when I saw that I was going to need to do that, I, I went ahead and did it and he was okay with it. And I was able to get to the tool, to the dent and, and, you know, get really good leverage and make, bring it out nice and clean. But I felt like a little bit more relaxed about doing it because it was a bedside. It wasn't, you know, a quarter panel where, which is part of the frame of the car, you know. But even still, I have drilled, you know, plenty of my share of, of quarter panels. So I think this is just going to be something that's going to be ongoing. And eventually we'll have to probably ask ourselves, you know, do we want to take on that repair? You know? uh, maybe, maybe I'll, I, I, you and me, and then we can have Paul Corden on there. He's always a good, guest when it comes to manufacturing access points you know mm -hmm. I, i'm not throwing mm -hmm. saying that paul corden's a drill master at all you know saying, <laughs> but he knows how to sell no, wait, wait, uh, man, <laughs> yeah, yeah he knows how to sell a manufactured access point that's for sure sure but i think it'd be an interesting uh, guest to bring on between you and me and him and and uh because i i'll be honest with you I, i'm right in the middle man i'm gonna do like I don't care one way or another, as long as, I, as long as I'm making one good access point and I'm going to be able to get that dent out clean, I'm going yeah. to, I'm going to mention that to the customer. All right. Uh, listen, if I get make an access point, I'm going to have a much better success rate of getting that yeah. out to, to your satisfaction than I will trying to fight all these angles and taking mm -hmm. things apart and whatnot. And yeah, it, uh, you know, it makes I, for a repair. Yeah. So, but that's a, that's that, that's that's why PDR is so different. I mean, everyone has their own style and own way of doing it, and self satisfaction of different things, and that's what's that's what makes it so great. So that's right. I think we're gonna end it on that, uh, Joe. What do you think? Dude? Yeah, that's cool, man. That's cool. Well, once again, everybody, uh, check out Joe, at Joe Garcia at DentEvil.com or DentEvil on Instagram, Facebook. You can check them out there. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you can. That would help a lot. And then let us know what you guys think in the comments. We'd really appreciate that. Other than that, we will see you guys 
on the next one. Talk to you guys soon. See ya.